Hey there geometry students, welcome to the chapter 4 review. This is not going to be a lecture, this is going to be, be me going through the chapter 4 review on these three pages here. So I'm just going to go through the whole review with you here, problem by problem. If you need extra help with this, I think this will prove to be very beneficial and also very ben beneficial for you as you prepare for your test on this chapter. So let's just start off here with number 1. All right, so one through four, we're classifying the triangle by its angles and sides. So let's start here. I got that in white. That's not going to work out. There we go. Let's start here by classifying this angle. Well, by its angles, I can tell that's a right triangle. So I'm going to say right. And then by its sides, I've got at least two sides being congruent. When it's like that, we say isosceles. So this one is a right isosceles triangle. All right, number two, I look at that, and I can tell that none of the sides are the same, so I can say that's scalene. And it appears that looking in the, the answers in the back, at least, for, for number three, they would want us to say that this is obtuse. So they don't say that in the picture here, but I guess they, they want us to assume that if it looks bigger than 90, in these cases that it actually is bigger than 90. So I would say this is an obtuse scaling triangle because we have one angle there that's definitely bigger than 90 degrees. We go by the looks. So this is an obtuse scaling, none of the sides being the same. So obtuse scaling So we got there. For number three, I would say that's obtuse right here, bigger than 90 degrees. And it's isosceles again because you have two sides that are the same. At least two sides being the same means it's isosceles. If all three are the same, then we have another special kind of triangle. It's a special kind of isosceles triangle, which we do have in number four. So for number four, I would say that's equal angular. All the angles are the same and equilateral. That's the special kind of isosceles triangle that we have here. So if I'm going to go by angles first, that's what I've been doing here. Angular, I would say first, it's an equiangular, equilateral triangle. All right, so that does it for one through four. And so let's move on to number five here. Number five says this, one acute angle of a right triangle measures 37 degrees. Find the measure of the other acute angle. If you try to do this in your head, it's gonna be pretty hard, but if you draw a picture first, it's going to be pretty easy, I think. So let's draw an acute angle of a right triangle. So we have a right triangle here. I'm just doing a you know, freehand sketch. You know what? Let me let me erase that. Let me use straighter lines. I can do that here. Ah, so I'll go with that. That looks a lot nicer. Got a straight edge. It doesn't hurt to use a straight edge, that's for sure. Uh, so let me move that down just a little bit so it touches a little better. Okay and then I'll connect this here. So I'm not measuring this perfectly to say that that's one of these is 37, the other one's whatever that's gonna turn out to be. Um, but I can put something in the corner here. I put a little box in the corner and say that that's a right triangle now. It's 90 degrees. And then this one, if it's one's 37, let's call this one 37. That angle looks a little smaller than this one. What's the measure of the acute angle? Well, you could do 180 minus these two, or you could just say, well, 90 is already here, so these two have to add up to 90. So I'll just do 90 minus 37. 90 minus 37, uh, so it goes with number five here. 90 minus 37 would be 53 degrees. So that's all we have to do for that one. So let's move on to number six. Number six. It says you have a triangle M and P. The measure of M is 24. The measure of N is 5 times the measure of P. So let's draw a triangle. And one of the angles here is going to be kind of small. The other one's going to be pretty big, it looks like. So I'm going to make this first angle that I draw kind of small. Uh, I'm going to make this next one pretty big. So it's 5 times the measure of N. And then this N one sounds like it's going to be pretty small to me too, and I don't want to fill that in. Uh, let's change the properties here, and we'll 
let's change that to a no fill. There we go. And let's add in there what it says. That. Uh, so I'll add in here what I had. So M, I'm going to say is here as 24 degrees. N is five times the measure of P. So I'm going to say this is N because this one's way bigger than this one here. So not necessarily drawn to scale by any means, but I'm going to say that if this one's five times bigger than this one, I could call this X, and then this I could call 5X degrees. Okay, so after you draw a picture, now I hope it's pretty easy to set up an equation for you. So this should be, I can just say X plus 5X plus 24 would be 180, or I could say 5X, I could switch the order of that there. 5x plus x plus 24 equals 180 degrees. Okay, so now it's just a matter of combining like terms. I've got six x's. I've got plus 24 equals 180. From there, I will bust out my orange here and subtract 24. That will cancel out with that. I'm left with six x equals. That's going to end up being. 156 and then I would divide this by 6 and that might not be one that it, uh, comes to mind right away I know it's not for me so I'm going to take 156 divide it by 6 and it looks like I get X equals 26 so this this is pretty important I'll circle that but not my final answer because I got to read my question here. It says find the measure of N, find the measure of P. So what do I have to do in the end? I have to say the measure of angle N, the measure of angle P equal whatever they equal. P is just in my picture, I label it as X degrees. So P is just going to be 26 degrees. And then N, well, what's 5 times 26? I know 5 times 20 is 100. I know 5 times 6 is 30. So together that makes 130. And if I add those together, I get 156 just like I should because 156 plus 24, put that back up here, that equals 180. That's a, a check of my answer. So I take this, I plug stuff back in. This one was just 5 times 26. So let's show a little work there and just say that was coming from that. Okay, let's move on to number 7 and 8. These ones kind of go together with this picture. So it says use the diagram above of triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. Identify the corresponding parts, the congruent corresponding parts of the triangle. So number 7, I would say, well, there's three angles that match up and there's three sides that match up. So this one, pretty easy to do. Just take a little bit of time here to write down what's what. So the angles that match up, I would say angle A is congruent to angle, well, it's got two marks here, it's got two marks here for X. So angle A and angle X. Remember you can also look at this, if the corresponding or if the congruence statement is written correctly like it is here, A to X, you can say B to Y and C to Z. You can look at the picture to verify that as well. So angle B is congruent to angle Y and you can also say angle C is congruent to angle Z. And then for the sides, I've got three pairs of sides that are congruent. I could say AB, segment AB is congruent to segment XY. I could say that segment BC is congruent to segment YZ. They both have two marks. And I could say that AC is congruent to XZ. They both have three marks. And so now number eight. Let's check out what it says here. Given that measure of angle A is 48, the measure of angle Z is 37, find the measure of angle Y. Okay, so let me, I'm going to redraw these triangles down here first just to make it easier. To, uh, to see what's what. Okay, so I just traced over the triangles up here to get what you see down there, and I'm saying this is A, 
B and C, and this is X, Y, and Z. So please draw pictures like this too if you haven't done that already. That's going to help us figure out what's what here. So the measure of angle A, we're saying that this is 48 degrees. I'll use a different color just to help that stand out a little bit here. So we're saying that this one's 48 degrees. That angle right there is 48 degrees. And we're also saying that this one right here is 37 degrees. Okay, and it tells us that the two things here are congruent. So we can say that A, and I'll use another different color here to make things stand out. We can say that A and X match up. Why don't I keep the same number of arc marks as I had up here too? So I can say that A matches up with X. Let's see that, that Z, one, two, three, matches up with C over here. One, two, three. And I have one, just one there, sorry. One arc mark there and one arc mark here. So that's 37, that's 48. Well, if this is 37, and these two are congruent, that one's also going to be 37. I'm trying to figure out the measure of Y, so uh, that wouldn't really help me figure out the measure of Y, but if this one's 48, and so is this one. This one's got to be 48 as well. So if I know those two now, all right, now I see what I can do here. So now I can say that 180 minus these two will give me what I have left for Y. So 180 minus these two, I could say these two added together, so 180 minus these two added together, that would equal 180 minus, and then 37 plus 48, that's 85. So this becomes 95 degrees right there. I could have also said 180 minus 37, and then I could have subtracted 48 from that. That's another way that we could think about that one. Um, but that's all we need to do for that one. So let's move on to number 9. 10 and 11, they're all here at the same time. So decide whether it is possible to prove that the triangles are congruent. If it is possible, tell which postulate or theorem you would use. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so this one, on this one I would recommend redrawing the pictures. I already got them here, so I'm just going to draw things on my pictures uh, if I need to, if there's anything else like that I can do. <clears throat> so I look at this one and I see angle, included side and an angle, an angle, an included side and an angle. And so that was one of our congruence postulates or theorems for triangles. So this one I would say yes. I'll explain my reasoning. I would just say something as simple as this, by angle, side, angle. Uh, everything's already in there so I don't need to redraw anything. So I don't feel like I need to explain my reasoning any farther than that. There was nothing else that I added to that. Number 10 I would say, well this one I have side, side, non-included angle. Side, side, non-included angle. So this one, is it that special case where that non-included angle is a right angle? No, no it's not. So this one I would say no, and why is that? Uh, so decide whether it is, if it is possible, tell which one you use, explain your reasoning. So it doesn't really say that if I say no, you have to explain my reasoning necessarily, but I'm going to anyways, just in case. So I'll put this in parentheses. This is because, B slash C, shorthand for because, because there is no side, side, angle. Remember how we remember this, or how I remember this, read it backwards or spell it backwards, that doesn't work. I don't want to hear that in class, I don't want to see that on your paper, and that's an easy way to remember why that's not a valid congruence postulate or theorem. Okay, so this last one, number 11, let's see what we got here. Okay, so I look at this one and I notice I'll add something in green here. I notice I have two parallel lines right here. Then I have this transversal that goes through both. And I see that this angle right here would be corresponding to this angle right there. So you kind of have to you imagine these lines continuing this way. Maybe that helps you see that this one 
and this one are corresponding with respect to this transverse. So this angle, this angle, I've got angle, angle, side, matching up with an angle, angle, and a side. So does this one work? I would say yes it does. So this one, you can say yes, and what would be my reason? You could say by angle, angle, side. Now this one, I would say a little bit of extra explanation would uh, be necessary with the way they've written these instructions here. So I would say something to the effect of, of this. That since HF, segment HF is parallel to segment JE, we also know that angle HFG is congruent to angle JEF by corresponding angles. And so I would say that's sufficient. That's definitely sufficient for me. I know with 9, uh, in the back they have a little extra explanation, but that's already all there. I feel like if you just say angle side angle, to me that is that is sufficient for that one. Uh, and then this one I feel like a little extra was necessary. We could add the green part in to the triangle there. Let's move on to number 12 though. And number 13 here. So you want to determine the width of a river beside a camp. You place stakes so that MN is perpendicular to NP, PQ is perpendicular to NP, and C is the midpoint of NP. So first we're trying to say are these two triangles congruent? If so, state the posture or theorem that can be used to prove that they are congruent. Uh, so let's look at information that I'm given here. I'm going to, to redraw a picture, a little bigger picture of what I see here. Okay, to, so to save us some time here in this video, I have just taken the picture, copied it down here, made things a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to go back to this, I'll underline this in red here. Taking this and I'm going to, in the picture, draw what this means, or what this signifies in red in the picture. So MN is perpendicular to NP, that would mean I could put something like that in the corner there. PQ is perpendicular to NP, I could do something like that right there. And then it says that C is the midpoint of NP, so why don't I do this in green just to help it stand out a little bit. So C is the midpoint of NP, I would put a mark there and a mark there. So are the triangles congruent? Is M CN congruent to QCP. Well, what's here, I couldn't say that yet, but I'll, I noticed one other thing that I could add into here. So this I'll just add in blue here. I could say that this angle and this angle, hopefully that's clear that those are the same because those are vertical angles. So if so, state the postulate or theorem that can be used to prove that they're congruent. Do I have to go through a two column proof and do everything step by step in this one. It looks like I don't have to do that here. I just need to add some things to the picture and then say what lets me say that. So this I would say is angle, side, angle, matching up with an angle, a side, and an angle. Just because it's a 90 degree angle doesn't mean that it's suddenly not an angle, it's still an angle. So angle, side, angle, matching up with an angle, and side, and an angle over here. So this one I could say yes by angle side angle for number 12. And then so for number 13, what segment should you use to find the width of the river? Well, the river's here. We can't, nece we can't necessarily like walk across the river. The whole point of doing this is to, to be able to measure the width of the river without getting wet, uh, without risking our lives. If this is a, a raging torrent, we wouldn't want to walk across that. Um, it might be too dangerous. So this PQ, if this and this are in congruent triangles like they are here, that means corresponding parts of congruent triangles have to be congruent. So I could add, essentially after proving that the triangles are congruent, I could add that to the picture there and say now that that and that have to match up. 
And so what segment should I use to find the width of the river? I should just measure off how long PQ is. So I would say PQ, segment PQ would be my answer. Why would that be? If you had to say why, I would say by CP, CTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And before I move on to the next one, just one other thing to point out here. You could have said something else other than this, actually, because there's a theorem that we learned that said if you have two lines that are perpendicular to the, the same line, that means they're con that they're parallel to each other. So we could actually prove that. Let me, let me rephrase that. Um, so I see two angles here that are perpendicular. They're also, that means they're, they're congruent to each other. And so I have alternate interior angles right here with respect to this transversal and these two, two lines. That would prove by the alternate interior angles converse that this segment right here is parallel to this segment right here. And if that's true, you could also say that this angle here would match up with this angle down here. So that would be kind of the long way to, uh, to go about proving it, I would say. But you could say you would have angle, angle, side then matching up with an angle, an angle, and a side here. So that's another possibility, another way you could possibly show that these two triangles are in fact congruent. I think though this was the easiest, easiest way to, to show that that was true. Uh, so moving on to numbers 14 through 17 in this one, finding the value of x in each case. <coughs> so 14 you have base angles being the same and so that would mean this is an isosceles triangle. I could add that to the picture. That means solving for x hopefully is very easy to do because if they're the same you can say that 2x plus 3 equals 17. From there hopefully a simple algebra problem for you. So this will become, this will cancel out, this will be 2x equals 14 and our last step divide by 2 you get x equals 7 so that one's pretty fast let's check out 15 in 15 I see that I have an isosceles triangle base angles are the same so I, that's already in there but I know that the three angles in a triangle should add up to 180 so what I see here is x plus x plus 72 equals 180. So again, hopefully after you set it up, you can see that this should be, or I hope it should be for you, a, a pretty basic algebra problem. If 2x plus 72 equals 180, I would subtract 72 from both sides here. I'm trying to get x by itself eventually here, so this will cancel. That leaves me with 2x on the left side equals 108 on the right side. If I divide both sides by 2, it gives me my final answer of x equals 54. x equals 54. If I plug that back in, 54 plus 54 plus 72, I add all those three numbers together and I do in fact get 180. I can plug 7 back in up here to check my answer that way as well. So number 16, let's see what we got here. It looks like another base angles being congruent would mean that these two are the same. That's the converse of the base angles theorem. Uh, so now we could say again, same sort of thing. We can set, use black for that. You can set these equal to each other. 4x minus 2 equals 3x plus 3. I like to keep my x's positive, so I'm going to subtract 3x. That will give me a positive x on the left side. I could have subtracted 4x and been left with a negative x. No problem with that if you did it that way. That would also work. Uh, that will leave me with x equals, and I'm going to show you a little trick here you haven't been doing this already you can do this in one step so I got all my X's over here 
Now I'm going to add two to this side over here. That will get rid of the two there. And three plus two will be x equals five. Could I have done that in two intermediate steps? Sure. Uh, but that will settle that. So x equals five. Plug that back in just to check. You got 20 minus two. That's 18. You'd have three times five plus three. That would also be 18. Uh, so let's do number 17 here see what we got with that one. So we have x here, this is 35 right here. That would mean, since these are the same, by the base angles theorem, I could say that this angle has to match up with this one down here. So this also has to be 35 degrees. And that means this and this and this have to add to 180. Uh, we've got the three interior angles in a triangle. I could say x plus 35 plus 35 equals 180. That would mean x plus 70. Oops. x plus 70, there we go, equals 180. Do my final step here to get x by itself. I'd subtract 70. And so hopefully it's clear then at that point that x equals 110 110 for x and then depending on what you see on your assignment sheet this one may or may not be assigned uh, but this would be number 18 here writing a coordinate proof for this so we're given that the coordinates of the vertices are what you see here in the picture and we're trying to prove that this is true. So I can tell by looking at OC and AB that there is no no what no slope to this. It's a horizontal line and this is also a horizontal line. The Y values, there's no change in the Y values. So it's going from H and staying at H. So I can say something like this. I'm gonna write this in a kind of a paragraph form rather than a two column proof form or flow uh, flow proof form. This will be a paragraph proof. So I can say that since I don't know why that turns out like that. That I, there we go, since the slopes of both so this is OC and AB are zero. I can say that's true because they're horizontal. Horizontal lines you might say if you could if you would just extend them out they would be horizontal lines. You can say that since that's true they are parallel. Okay. And now since they're parallel, let's draw that in the picture. I'm going to draw some extra stuff in the picture in red here as I go. So this is new stuff. Use a different color as we go to prove the new stuff. Now I can say that based on that I can say that this angle and this angle are the same. They even look like they're 90 degrees to me but I'm not going to say that that's true for right now. I can at least say that this is true though. I may be able to prove later that they're perpendicular if I need to do that. Uh, so I can say basically this. So by alternate interior angles since we have the parallel lines we can prove that alternate interior angles are congruent. I can say that angle OCA is congruent to angle BAC. So now I've got one piece of information there. I can also see in the picture this is pretty obvious to me right here that they share this side here in common. So based on what I see in the picture, I can say also the two triangles share segment AC. So in a sense I can say, so AC is congruent to AC by the reflexive property. So 
No, I've got that is true. I've got that. That's true. The side here and the angles here. Anything else that I can prove is true? Well, because these are coordinates, I can also look at the coordinate values here. Maybe figure out the distance from here to here and figure out the distance from here to here. That could tell me something pretty important right there. So I can look at this. I notice, well, I've got this x value. Remember, it doesn't go up or down at all, so I just really need to look at that x values that go from 0 here to h here so that's if I go x2 minus x1 I've got h minus 0 uh, so I can also tell I'll go I'll make it sound a little fancier here I'll say additionally I'll say that OC equals h minus 0 which equals h And if I look at A, B, I can say the same sort of reasoning gets to gets me to saying that A, B is also H. I look at the X values, it's 2H minus H right here. And so I can say that the distance from A to B is 2H minus H, which also equals H. So based on that, I can say that O, C equals a b and thus or therefore I could say that OC is congruent to a b so let me put that in the picture Up here I can say that this one now is congruent to this one up here and so now I look at that and it's, I can see that I have all I need we got a side, an angle, and a side, matching up with the side, an angle, and a side. So now I can prove, based on that, based on side, angle, side, that OAC is congruent to BCA. And so let's finish this up by saying, therefore, I'm trying to prove is true. So triangle OAC is congruent to triangle BCA by side angle side. So that wraps up the chapter 4 review for us. Hopefully you found that helpful in preparing not only for your test um, but in, in just helping you finish the review. If you were stuck on any of there I hope you just kind of went to the ones you needed a little help on. Uh, if you needed help on the whole thing you got help on the whole thing there. Uh, but be ready for your test coming up soon and uh, let me know if you have any questions in class. Thanks.